Dramas over the years have been at the forefront of television. They tackle serious issues while providing a wide range of entertainment for the audience. Script writing is where it all begins. The themes, locations, characters and so many more elements come together to create original groundbreaking work. We met up with BAFTA award winning scriptwriter Tony Marchant to explore the journey of his career, how he began, what he's done and where he sees himself going in the future. For the first time ever, I'm doing a series now, which is happening in, in uh, at the moment. It's happening at the moment, and will go out next year. Um, which is which is probably a reflection of the fact that you know, ten years ago, five years ago, even I may not have been particularly interested in writing a series. I, um, and and I think that's changed. That that's been the big that's been the big sort of evolution. Part of the evolution of, of British television drama has been the move into into series. Before Tony started writing for a profession, he was a huge fan of punk music from the late 1970s. You know, basically there was a do-it-yourself ethic about music then, which for me translated into the fact that if you hadn't been to university, it didn't mean you, you weren't allowed to write a play if you wanted to. And, and, um, and that, you know, the idea of expressing yourself was... Uh, that being in a band was one way and so was writing a stage play. When I started off in the theatre, um, when I was 19, I was quite lucky I had a play done when I was 19, 20, stage play, and I, and I wrote quite a lot of stage plays. And then inevitably, you know, television comes calling and asks you to write f for it. Um, so my way in was through theatre, but my way into theatre was through music. The Clash and the Jam were two bands that inspired Tony's work heavily. Their personal approach to addressing major issues translated into one of his most critically acclaimed pieces of work, Kid in the Corner. Well, everything you write somehow is, is personal, ultimately. Some things are more, uh, you know, buried. Um, but obviously that was quite uh, overt. Um, but even saying that, I still changed the goalposts because it, it became about ADHD. It was about a child with ADHD, not, you know, not on the autistic continuum. Um, but at the same time, you, you, you invest an awful lot of yourself in it, in it personally, but, but you have to, to, for it to be a successful drama that resonates with people, it's not a memoir, you know, it's a drama that's being broadcast, so it has to resonate with not just like, people that have got children with disabilities, but people, with, people who are parents. It's about Because in the end, the kid in the corner has to be ultimately about parenting and, and parenthood and your relationship with your children. It has to be bigger than the thing it's about. It has to universalise. Throughout all of his work, themes of moral responsibility have reoccurred. For this reason, critics often describe Tony Marchant as a moralist. You know, um, it, it's not something you're conscious of. Um, and then somebody, you know, an academic or somebody says, do you, you know, do you realise that, that there are certain themes in your in your work that keep cropping up over and over again? And you think, yeah, that's true. And then even when you're made aware of it, you know, you don't, you don't change. You 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 know, for whatever reason, you have you have a you have a particular set of obsessions and preoccupations, and they feed into your work in different ways all the time. Having previously written more personal and intimate stories, Tony decided to branch out into a more complex narrative revolving around the vast landscape of London and how there is a society present there. The whole thing about holding on was 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 saying, okay, um, if you. If something happens in one part of town, it, it has a knock-on effect on something that happens in, an, in another part of town. And it was referred to by some critic as urban chaos theory, you know. And I think in the end it was about trying to say, this is how society works, that every action has a reaction. We are all connected, there, there, there is such a thing as society. Um, we do have to kind of um, be aware that whatever we do has, has an effect on, on, on other people. Um, and so, um, 
it just needed a hell of a lot of planning really. I remember now, you know, writing um, all, all, the, all the characters down one side, the episodes along that side, like a grid thing, and saying to keep up with their journeys and what was going on in each episode for them. Um, and that was written by me and the script editor on a massive white board, you know. And I was trying to, because I was trying to, trying to keep it all um, in view. With a collection of successful programmes under his belt, the Academy started to recognise Tony's work. The first battery I won was for holding on. Um, and then I um, won a battery a couple of years on from that, which is a Lifetime Achievement Award, so, which, was, which I was given quite early. I, I did a show called Take Me Home in 1989, um, which got nominated for various awards and won to and then go a, a show called Goodbye for a World a couple of years after that and that was like 1992 so quite early on I um, had you know I'd, I'd kind of established a, a sort of reputation for doing good good work that was successful and then Baffa didn't turn up until about five years after that I don't think so I, I can't no I don't think it had any, any effect really when I started I started off in the theatre and, I, and I, wrote, I wrote quite controversially for the theatre if you like and, and because of the way that I moved from, from theatre into TV, I was, I, it wasn't as if I had to change my voice. Most TV drama up the, up the, in, the, in the, sort of the, the sort of area that I'm writing in needs to be provocative and needs to be challenging um, to earn its, its place in the schedule. In, in Family Man, I was lo looking at scientific um, um, advancements in the way that, that, that we were pushing more and more towards um, embryo selection and stuff, you know, which could have a quite a frightening eugenic kind of overtone, undertone rather. The heart of it is, you know, the emotional uh, agony or, 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 or uh, trauma of want, wanting the thing that seems to be the simplest thing in the world to have, which is a child. For me, I only really can understand a character by the journey that they go on. It's about how people change from the beginning of the story to the end and, 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 and what they go through. Most dramatists, if, if you ask them, don't, aren't, don't really go for the issue. They, they, go, they go for a story. And that was, I just knew that had the potential for a great, to be a great story. When we met up with Tony, he gave us an insight into his latest piece of work, Mark of Cain, which is about prisoner abuse in the Iraq war. Um, I, I would never approach something saying I'm going to write about a worldwide issue. The Iraq war is so big, it's, it's such a big subject, you have to find a very particular way in. And it wasn't as if I was wanting to write about Iraq just because, you know, I've got a reputation of doing issue-based dramas that I wanted to, you know, tick the box of doing Iraq. It was more about uh, having been struck by a particular story within it. The Mark of Cain is ultimately about the friendship between two 18-year-old squaddies. And it's about what happens to that friendship you know, and it's a rites of passage film as well about two 18-year-old boys as well. It just happens the context is quite extraordinary. The context is the Iraq war in the occupation. And, but, but at the same time, it's, a, it's also a very personal story. I think you just have to be passionate about, about the, 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 um, what, why you're doing it um, and, and, and want to um, pursue your obsession with it. And I think in the end, you know, it's quite a tough industry, so you need to, you need, yeah, it's, you know, it's a cliche, you need to have a thick, a thick skin, but, um, but more than that, you have to sort of care about it enough not to be put off by other knocks that you're going to get. And finally, we asked Tony where he saw his work going in the future. I think it's a challenge for me and I, and I need to move into something newer and, and, and to dream up successful series. You know, and, and anybody, any writer now, I think in this country would love to emulate The Sopranos, for instance. Or the wire, you know, and and what and um, and if you if you think that way, then you you're never going to going to be drawn to to trying to make those kind of things work. Um, so that's what I'd like to go. It depends, obviously, on the sort of patronage you get from the from the broadcasters as well, whether they'll they'll let you have that much development um, to make it work. But that that's that's where I see it.